Hey developers, thank you for checking out the channel. When I was first looking for a job as a programmer, I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what to do to stand out from the crowd. I didn't know what to study and I didn't even know how to deal with rejection or failure. So I made this list of five tips that you can use to land that programming job. I wanted to make this list very comprehensive, very simple for developers, for beginners, and even also for intermediate or advanced programmers. So please check it out. Stay all the way to the end. I actually have a surprise for you for those who stay to the end. I have a contest. Just stay tuned. All right, let's begin. Here is my top five tips to land that web development job. So number one is portfolio. So if nothing else, if you don't have anything to show, don't expect anyone to care. In other words, you really need to show whoever you're trying to apply for that you have skills. And the easiest way of doing that is to create a portfolio. That means take your knowledge, put together some pages. What If you're going for a backend website, make sure that you include a backend to the website make sure that you include the code somewhere hopefully on github so that way people can see what you've done so a portfolio isn't it is very simple but something that a lot of people miss and if you don't create a portfolio at least create some sort of home on the web for you that could be anything from just a medium articles blogs that you've written on medium it could just be a home page that you put up somewhere that you're hosting just somewhere where you can have content you can talk a little about it a little bit about yourself and your accomplishments that people can find you at that is really important to do the next thing you want to do is build authority that means you want to start blogging you want to create a youtube channel maybe if you're comfortable in front of the camera you may want to create your own podcast but this is a way that employers will start to notice you it's also a way if you're doing freelancing to build an audience. And it's also a way if you're interested one day to create um, some online products or portfolios, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, this might be an also a great avenue. But it really points to being an authority in your space. And this is something that's gonna take some time. So writing one or two Medium articles or one or two blogs, probably not gonna get you much in the way of jobs, but if you build a library of very interesting maybe even some articles that get some notoriety, then you're gonna be able to use that to attract employers. And the point is to have employers and recruiters to come to you. Now, a lot of people don't like recruiters, but it's great to have them contact you so that way you know that you can get jobs from it. So if you're not interested in being in um, writing, you can also do something like YouTube, or if you don't wanna do YouTube, there's also podcasting, which is really um, awesome too. And really, if you don't feel like this makes sense to you, you don't wanna put a bunch of time into blogging or YouTube or podcasting, then contribute to some open source projects. You can make a name for yourself. I would caution you though, that contributing to open source projects are great to get your skills up, but if you wanna actually build authority, you may want to create your own open source project. And that is easier said than done. And actually getting contributors and people pushing up pull requests, you might find that difficult but it's one thing you can definitely shoot for. Maybe start contributing to another popular open source project, Become, try to become a, a major contributor, and then if you build enough credi credibility, you might be able to become a core team member. I mean, that process takes a long time, but at least if you can create something of your own that's your open source that has a little bit of popularity, that would really help you. Another tip is to pick a niche. I see so many people that uh, are learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and they're just kind of learning the basics and then applying for jobs. But really, if you wanna stand out from the crowd, pick a niche and become an expert at it. That means if you wanna become a JavaScript expert, pick a framework. If you wanna become a backend expert, pick, pick which backend you wanna become an expert in. But you need to really put a lot of effort and time into it. You wanna practice daily. You wanna share what you're learning, but this will actually go back to the blogging, and the YouTube and, and things like that. Um, but you really want to show that you have authority and that you understand that technology. And of course, don't do this thing where I've actually done this in the past is where you skip the 
the beginner and intermediate levels and you go right to advanced and expert. In other words, there's building blocks, especially in web development or even any type of programming where you need to learn the basics first. So of course, learn HTML, learn some CSS, JavaScript before you decide to become the expert in this technology or this stack or this framework. So definitely don't forget those basics and really try to learn more than just the intermediates or basics of it. And like I said, when you become, when you do pick a niche, you really need to show your authority. So definitely don't be afraid to share. Now, this is a controversial subject. I've done complete videos on this, on education, and there is a lot of different minds on this. Some people think that at this point, you don't need a formal education. Some people believe that you need to at least go to a boot camp. Some think people believe that just self-taught is the way to go. So I, I think that all three can work. You can teach yourself to become, especially in the web development field, uh, there's a lot of self-taught web developers out there. You can be really good at it. There's uh, people coming out of boot camps, out of Hack Reactor. They're spending you know ten to twenty thousand dollars on these boot camps and becoming experts, and then they're getting entry-level jobs. So you just have to figure out what works best for you. But really, when you're job hunting, you need to take this into consideration. I think you really need to do more than just get an education. You need to do some of these other steps I'm talking about. But you, at the minimum, you need to find where you want to learn stuff. Uh, in fact, there is a website called Front End Masters, which I'll link in the description below, that has an amazing uh, amount of different video courses that can get you up to speed on front end development and a lot of different topics. And I will be talking about them more in the future because stay tuned to the end of the video. I actually have a quick giveaway on that. And I want to plug the traditional education system one more uh, one more time here. I've said in the past, and I just said earlier, that you need to figure out what works for you. But if you're right out of high school or younger or you don't have kids in a family, you may want to consider school, uh, traditional education. And that means a four-year degree. And I would recommend the computer science field because a lot of companies are looking for computer science graduates. But really, if you can get any type of degree, that's better than nothing. And I always think in life there's a few unfair advantages. And unfortunately, for all the self-taught programmers and boot, uh, boot camp programmers out there, having a college education is one of those little bit of unfair advantages. Even though you may be self-taught and you may be just as good as someone that comes out of a four-year college, maybe even better, a lot of HRs, a lot of larger companies may completely pass on your resume because you don't have a degree. Usually this isn't as big of a deal after you already have 10 years of experience here in the industry, but when you're first starting out, this is a pretty big deal. And just getting your foot in the door will be much easier with a degree than it is without. So if you have that opportunity, you may want to look to get a degree. So this isn't very uh, quick overnight success to get a job in web development. You really need to keep this in mind. The education is important. So networking, uh, this is a really great way of meeting people. Some people say that most jobs you get are out of networks or people that you know. So having a warm introduction to someone is so much more helpful than a cold introduction. So if you apply for somewhere and you at least know one person or you know the hiring manager or someone refers you, you're much more likely to get that interview and to get the job. So if you can go out to local meetups, you can go to meetup.com and find your local web development or programming meetup, go to it, start making friends. Um, get out of your comfort zone, talk to people that you normally wouldn't talk to, make small talk. I know as web developers and programmers and and developers, we're kind of stereotyped to be antisocial. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true, the people I've met in the field. But there are that that stereotype does exist for some for some people. So definitely try to get out of your comfort zone and start networking and meeting people. And you'll find out more you talk to people, more people you'll you'll find out needs developers. You can also, you know, tell them you're looking for a job. You know, you may want to even connect with them um, outside of the meetup. So try to get names, get business cards if you can, maybe add them on LinkedIn, follow up with some people. It might feel at, at first a little 
I know multi-level marketing or scammy or something, but you got to get over those fears and kind of just get yourself out there and, and start networking. And really don't just attend the meetups, uh, de present at one, become involved with one. You're going to find it much more pleasurable, more fun. And the first time I went into a meetup and I did a presentation, I was super nervous. But after I did that process, I was much more comfortable in the future getting out in front of people and talking. And I think it's made me uh, easier to it's made me uh, easier to to talk in front of people. Uh, we're going to talk about practicing and review skills. I did a, an interview just last week with a former Facebook engineer about once you actually land that interview. So getting in the door is going to be hard. But, you know, if you have that portfolio, if you have some authority in the space that you're coming into, and that you've worked hard to pick a niche, you you will finally and eventually someone may even out of just necessity or just randomly, they may choose you to go to an interview. And at that point, it doesn't matter what your portfolio says or what authority you quote unquote have in the niche that you picked, you are going to be, your skills are going to be tested, which is not not really something that that happens in a lot of other fields. You know, I haven't heard of doctors being given a test, multiple rounds of whiteboarding interviews when they get hired somewhere. Of course, they have a lot of schooling, but in the software and web development world and just programming in the world in general, you are going to be tested on your skills. So you need to focus on a few things. First is whatever topic or whatever topic or niche that you picked, if they're looking for JavaScript, just make sure you understand the basics of that language that they're looking for or programming framework or whatever it is. So that way you can talk intelligently about it and answer questions for it. It seems pretty obvious, but sometimes people forget that. Many interviews, especially for larger companies, are going to look for people that know algorithms. So this is really important to, to start studying algorithms. There is so many different resources, leak code, there's, um, there's cracking the coding interview. There's a lot of places. So start practicing the algorithms, work hard. You'll probably get a take home test. In a lot of them, you'll need to do well on those too. You're going to have to maybe, uh, you're going to have to answer some questions, maybe do some whiteboarding, creating an app on a whiteboard too. So you have a lot of things to study. So, remember to do that. And I would start before you even start looking for a job is start practicing your interviewing skills. And of course, don't forget the basic etiquette of interviews, you know, show up on time, be friendly to people, smile, make sure you can answer some of the basic interview questions that we hear all over the place. Like, where do you see yourself in five years? Name something you're not very good at. Name something, name some skills that you need some help on. Name some skills you're really good at. Make, come up with some stories and some accomplishments of things that you've done in previous jobs so that you can highlight. It, this is no time to be modest. You want to sell yourself. And that means you need to tell them why they should hire you over many other people. And believe me, we are in a very saturated market, especially if you're in web development. And if you're a junior developer, there is literally thousands of people that want your job. You need to find out a way that you can impress the interviewer and you need to work on that. And of course, interviewing is just the first step. Study, study, study. And of course, you'll be tested on your knowledge and skills. And finally, this is worth mentioning, don't give up. Not many people will get their dream job on the first interview. Most people will fail. Every no is a learning experience. Don't take it as failure as that you're a failure. Take it as something where you are going to learn from it and you're going to try and apply it going forward. So it's always good to remind yourself that. And it's normal to take many different interviews before you get that first job. So keep going. This is normal. It took me several interviews before I got my foot in the door. So you've listened to this whole pitch, this slide. So what I have a contest, I want to have you guys join front end masters has given me a one year subscription that I can give out to one of you that are listening right now. But I want to make sure that you are listening and that you are paying attention. So in the comments below, 
if you'd like to be entered into this contest, that's for one year of Front End Masters. You can go to frontendmasters.com for more information. I'll put a link in the description. Well, you can find the website there. But for this contest, leave a comment below with the keyword success. So success somewhere in the comment. Maybe explain to me one success you've had in your web development career or your programming career, if not even to web development. Let me know. And as a bonus, if you join my mailing list, I'll put a link in the description of the mailing list. You can add yourself and get another entry into the contest. And I will do this live on air probably uh, by Monday of next week. So you have a little bit of time, but I would put it in sooner more uh, sooner than later because if you don't do it now, you will probably forget. So leave a comment below with the keyword success somewhere in it and also join my mailing list to be able to get a free year of front end masters. I'm only picking one winner, one person. So one person, one lucky person will get that. So join my mailing list and leave a comment below. If you like these type of videos, I definitely, I'm always giving away free stuff. I like to give back. Click that subscribe button and also click that little bell button so you're notified. And if you've entered this contest, click that bell button so you are notified when I do the live drawing because you want to be uh, you want to be present for that. If I last time I did a contest, I had one person that never showed up, never answered my email after they won, and they did not get the prize, and I had to give it to someone else. So if you don't click that bell button, you may not remember to come and watch the live feed and you may not know that you won. I may not be able to get a hold of you. Your The email may go into your spam folder. You may not see that YouTube message. So definitely subscribe and click that bell button so you are notified. Thanks guys, take care.